Hi everyone and welcome back to the Brem Method YouTube channel. So in our content category 2A video reference list, there's a great video on osmotic pressure and how to calculate osmotic pressure given different parameters. The problem with that video is that you have to use a calculator to get the answer, which as we know on the MCAT, you do not get a calculator and you have to do a lot of mental math or quick math in order to get the question right in about a minute. So today I thought we'd go through those questions exactly as they're written, but from an MCAT lens where we won't need to use a calculator. And I'm going to show you a few shortcuts to make sure you could tackle a question like that on test day. So let's get started. Okay, so the first question, which is about at five minutes in that linked video, asks you to calculate the osmotic pressure of a 300 milliliter solution made by dissolving 80 grams of NaOH at 27 degrees Celsius. So there's a lot of parts to this problem, and I'm going to go ahead step by step and walk you through how you would set it up for ease on test day. So the first thing we do need to know, this is something that you would need to bring with you on test day, is the equation for osmotic pressure, which denoted by pi equals molarity, R, which is our gas constant, T for temperature, and I, which is a unitless value just describing how many ions are made in the solution. So why don't we start with I, because that is the most straightforward. And we know that if we dissolve NaOH into solution, it's going to become Na plus for our cation and OH minus for our anion, we know that this is a strong base, so it's going to dissolve completely in solution, which leaves us with two ions, or an I of two. So our I is going to be two. Next, let's talk a little bit about the gas constant, R. You are expected to know the value of R for test day, which is 0 0.0821, and you're expected to know the units, which are liters times atmosphere over moles per Kelvin. And like most constants, this is designed to help us cancel out units for equations such as this osmotic pressure. Now on test day, they often will give you this, especially if they want you to use this number to calculate something on test day. So even though you are expected to memorize, don't be surprised if you see this in parentheses in a question stem. So if we take a look at R, the key thing to remember about using R is that we have to use the same units that are in our constant. So we need to have liters, atmospheres, moles, and Kelvin. And hopefully you can see why this already presents a challenge for us for this question, because our temperature, T, is not in Kelvin, it's in Celsius. So how do we convert Celsius to Kelvin? Yep, you just add 273 to whatever the Celsius value is. Now this one, 27 plus 273 equals 300. So our temperature here quickly converted is 300 Kelvin. 300 Kelvin to 27 degrees Celsius is a good one to memorize, right? It's a common temperature for most practice problems. Okay, so what's the other unit that might cause some difficulties on this problem? Yep, you saw it. Liters, milliliters, right? So we need to convert from milliliters to liters. For me, I just throw the exponent on it. So 300 milliliters is the same thing as saying 300 times 10 to the negative three liters. If you need any help with unit conversion and exponents, you can check out the links in my description below. Okay, so for this, I want to resolve this pretty quickly. We have two extra zeros here. So if we move the decimal to the left, right, we want to move this guy closer to zero. So that would turn it into 10 to the negative one. So our liters are three times 10 to the negative one. You want to be very comfortable with exponents on the MCAT. So this really just means 0.3, but I'm going to leave it as 3 times 10 to the negative 1, because quite frankly, I find it easier to deal with exponents than to e deal with decimals. If you feel differently, you can switch it right into decimals, right? Same number. Okay, so now we have all of the correct units for what we need, but there's something missing, right? And hopefully you've called it out, but remember, but just in case you haven't seen it yet, molarity is moles per liter. And we do not have moles. 
What do we have? Yep, grams. So we need to get from grams to moles. Now think way back to basic gen chem, right? To get from grams to moles, we're gonna need molar mass. So you will have access to a periodic table on the MCAT. So go ahead, pause this video, pull up a periodic table and calculate the molar mass of NaOH. Go for it and I'll meet you back and we'll do it together. Okay, so hopefully you found that the molar mass of sodium is 23, the molar mass of oxygen is 16, and the molar mass of hydrogen is one, which gives us 40 grams per mole. Okay, so now we just need to go from grams to moles using this number. Now you could set up dimensional analysis like you probably learned how to do in your Gen Chem class. I, however, have liked to just memorize what I need to do with these numbers because molar mass does come up so often on the MCAT. So for me, I've memorized that if I'm going from grams to moles, I need to divide by the molar mass. And if I'm going from moles to grams, I need to multiply by the molar mass. Moles multiply. Mol starting moles multiply the way I remember it. So since we're going from grams to moles, I know I need to divide. So we'll take our number 80 grams of NaOH. We'll divide by the molar mass, which is 40 grams per mole. You can see how those grams cancel out nicely and then the mole comes on top. And then 80 divided by 40, you can cross out the zeros. Eight divided by four is two moles. Okay, so we have all the numbers we need now. We have two moles of NaOH, and we just need to then convert that into molarity using our liters, and then we multiply. So we have two moles, right, divided by three times 10 to the negative one liters for our molarity, and then we have 0.08 to one. I'm not going to rewrite the units because you have them right there. And then we have 300 Kelvin and we have two for our unitless I value. Okay, still looks pretty complicated to do without a calculator, right? So I'm going to take one number at a time and show you how we can make it a little easier. And the faster you get at this, right, the more efficient you'll be on test day. So let's start with the molarity here. So as I'll talk about in one of my math videos, we want to separate the mantissa, which is the big number, from the exponent, and you could actually do the division separately. In other words, you can do 2 divided by 3, and then 10 to the 0, since there's no exponent on the numerator, divided by 10 to the negative 1. Now let's start with the exponent first, because that tends to be a little trickier. When we divide exponents, we really subtract the exponent number. So the math is 0 minus minus 1 equals 1. So our exponent on the numerator will end up being 10 to the 1. All right, so now let's do our mantissa, right, that big number. 2 thirds becomes 0.67. It's good to know your basic fractions, such as thirds, fifths, and eighths. OK, so 0.67 times 10 to the 1. We move the decimal over 1 to be 6.7m. OK, so that's one number down. Now let's handle the 0.0821. So this is the MCAT. You're going to have multiple choice. They're going to be different enough numbers that you can round a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and take away the 21 and just call this 0.08. And I'm going to convert that into scientific notation because, like I said, it's easier for me to deal with exponents than decimals. So that'll turn into 8 times 10 to the negative 2. We move the decimal over to the right. Same thing with 300. I'm going to go ahead and do 3 times 10 to the 2, right? And then we just have the value of 2 for the i. And so now we have 6.7, which we're going to go ahead and round to 7. And because we round it up, we know our real number is going to be a little less, right? When you round up, your actual value is going to be a little less than the number you get. So I like to always just put a little less than signed when I round up and a greater than sign when I round down. Again, more on that math in another video. Less than 7 times 
8 times 10 to the negative 2 times 3 times 10 to the 2 times 2. And just like we did with the molarity, we can separate the mantissa, those big numbers, from their exponents. And if we take a look, we have 7, 8, 3, and 2. And if we look at the exponents, 10 to the negative 2 times 10 to the 2 cancel out. So we don't even have to worry about any exponents. We can just multiply these four single digit numbers. So for me, I'm just going to go straight through it. 7 times 8 is 56. And then 3 times 2 is 6, right? And then 56 times 6. 6 times 6 is 36. 5 times 6 is 30. 3 36 and I bring down that less than value because I know that my actual number is going to be slightly less than 336. The actual answer on that video was actually 328.4, which on the MCAT will be close enough. If we have 336 atmospheres is our osmotic pressure. Now I know that seemed like a lot, but my point is, is that we can do all of this math without a calculator and get close enough to get the right answer on test day. I also want you to notice that by the time we started doing our plug and chug math, right, 7 times 8, 3 times 2, we now know that we're going to have a number definitely greater than 100, right, if we're multiplying these guys together. So if there's answer choices like 0.8 or 0.3 or even 10 atmospheres, we know that those are going to be the wrong answers and what we're looking for is an answer greater than 100, which there may only be one of and you won't even have to do that plug and chug math all the way out. So every step of the way as you're doing math, check the answer choices and see if there's anything you can eliminate because you know that it's nowhere close to the answer you're getting. Okay, let's try that second problem in the osmotic pressure video. So we're going to be using the same exact equation. Now though we have different variables and we have some different units to deal with, right? So our same rules apply. We need to be in the units of the gas constant, which is liters, moles, atmospheres and Kelvin. So we do have Kelvin, that's a good thing, but now we're in Tor. So that's going to be our first step today, is we're going to go ahead and switch our Tor value for our osmotic pressure into atmospheres so that we can do the math. So the conversion from Tor to atmospheres is 760 Tor equals one atmosphere. And what we can do is think of this as 760 Tor per one atmosphere. And when we have it like this, and what we can do is we could actually just divide our Tor value in our question stem by this conversion. So 1870, there's no point in putting the ones. Again, we're rounding a little bit. 1870 Tor over 760 Tor per atmosphere. That's going to, again, put atmospheres on the top, and it's going to eliminate our tors. So it's 870 divided by 760. Tough numbers, right? So let's go ahead and eliminate the zeros, because we can do that. And so now we have 187, which let's go ahead and round that up significantly to 200. Right? That's a significant rounding. And let's round the 760 down a little bit to 75, just a teensy bit. So now we're saying, okay, how many times does 75 go into 200? Well, if you know that 75 times 2 is 150, and then we'll have 50 left over, right, it's going to be roughly, very roughly, 2.5. And for atmospheres, that's plenty close enough, right? Again, on the MCAT, there's going to be four different answers that are different enough that you'll be able to round comfortably. So just so you know, you can round, you can say, okay, well, this is roughly going to go in more than two, but less than three times. So I can go ahead and assume it's going to be around 2.5. Okay. So it's around 2.5 atmospheres, and that's going to be our osmotic pressure. And now let's focus our attention to the right side of the equation. Why did they bother to tell us non-electrolyte solute? Non-electrolyte means non-ionizing, which means our I is going to be 1. 
And that's very important, right? Because if we don't know what the cellute is, we would have no way to know what I was as a value if they didn't indicate non-electrolyte. So use that as a hint from your test makers saying, hey, we're trying to help you out that you're on the right track and that this I is only gonna be one. So I'm gonna ignore the I here, right? Because we're just multiplying it by one. And then our temperature is gonna be 300 Kelvin, right? Or three times 10 to the two. And then our R again is gonna be eight times 10 to the negative two. So these guys are gonna cancel out, right? So quickly, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that math to make my life easier later on, right? We can eliminate the 10 to the negative two and 10 to the two, they cancel out. Eight times three is simply 24. So RT is gonna be 24. Okay, so our next step is gonna to be to isolate molarity, which will help us determine the molar mass of the solute. So we have 2.5 as atmospheres as our osmotic pressure, and we're gonna go ahead and divide that by 24, which is our combination of our RTI, right? And that's gonna give us our molarity our molarity value. So 2.5 divided by 24. Okay, so these numbers are really close together. So let's go ahead and make them the same. 2.5 can become 25 times 10 to the negative one atmospheres. And 24 can just become 25 with a very slight rounding up. And that's gonna resolve to one times 10 to the negative one or 0.1 molar. Okay, so that's our molarity value, 0.1 moles per liter. And now we just need to isolate moles so we're able to determine the molar mass. So how would we isolate moles? Well, we need to get rid of liters, so we need to multiply by a liter value. Now we look up at the question stem, we have 500 milliliters, which we can convert quickly to five times 10 to the negative one, using the same logic we used in the last problem for liters. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and use this previous orientation of 0.1, which is one times 10 to the negative one. And I'm gonna go ahead and multiply these two together. So one times five is five, and then 10 to the negative one times 10 to the negative one. When you multiply exponents, you add the exponent value. So that's gonna be times 10 to the negative two. Negative one plus negative one equals negative two. So this is our mole value. Okay, so far so good. So our molar mass is always going to be in grams per mole. So we just need to divide grams, which is up here, nine grams, divided by our mole value. So we have nine divided by five times 10 to the negative two. We can do the same thing, okay? We're gonna round very slightly up, right? Which means our value is gonna be a little less. So that's 10 divided by five equals two and then 10 to the zero divided by 10 to the negative two remember we subtract zero minus minus two is 10 to the two so our final answer is two times 10 to the two grams per mole so our answer is going to be probably a little less remember to bring over the less than symbol it's going to be a little less than two times 10 to the two grams per mole or converting that over 200 grams per mole. For more math practice, please check out the links in the description below and head over to my math video series where I'll be uploading more videos like this going through MCAT style math to help you prep for test day. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.